talking to y'all right here and um, interviewing our top salesperson in the country so far this year. She is not just barely winning either. She is absolutely dominating. We've got other top people that are just killing this. Um, Paul Minichino, uh, Hutchinson, Alleman's always up there, and uh, Robert Wilson. We've got a ton of people just killing it this year. But Megan has come on to kind of set a crazy example. I think it's, it's a lot of things. It's product knowledge. It's work ethic. It's goal-oriented. It's um, consumer-eccentric, just consumer-focused whether it be for her agents, but today we're mostly talking about her clients, how much she thinks about them and strategizes and cares about their success. And as she calls it, helping people. So um, Megan, first of all, let's talk about how are you doing? You're, you're on a streak. You've been doing 10,000 submitted premium a day. And it's not just one IUL or one annuity. You've been hitting the numbers. You're doing annuities too, but you're hitting the numbers. I give us a review on what's been happening the last seven or eight days that your production, what it's been like. All right. So I made it a goal. Um, it's crazy because last, I was just talking to Mike about this. So my last streak where my son was at his dad's, I made a goal for myself that I needed to do 5,000 a day because I had a week straight. So if I did 5,000 a day, that would get me at 35,000 in a week. And so that was my goal last time. And, you know, having the mindset that I have, I'm like, okay, I, I want more. I want more, more, more. So, so I thought, well, you know, I mean, I, I accomplished that goal. So why not shoot for 10,000 a day? And so that's what I had been working to. So I think, what can I do? to get 10,000 a day. And then I fight like hell to get it. And I don't stop that day until I get my 10,000. So, and if I don't get it, then I double up the next day. I make sure that I am averaging 10,000 a day. So the last seven, how, so how many, what's your day streak? Are you seven days in a row at 10,000 a day? Um, yeah, so yesterday, I did 10,000. So right now I'm at 80,000 in eight days. <laughs> 80,000 submit. You have roughly idea of how many applications that is? Um, I'm at about 100, 100 apps. 100 applications in eight days. And um, you got one full-time assistant or she's yeah. part-time that helps you try to get these applications filled out? <laughs> she's supposed to be part-time. But yeah, so she works at another job too. Um, all the hours with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the time, all the time. Like if she's not with me, I'm talking to her on the phone. I'm texting her just constantly. And, you know, that's, that's what makes it work, Andy. I mean, like that's what makes it work because I was the same way, you know, when I first started with Mike and Noel, the exact same way. And I am doing the exact same thing with Danielle. But honestly, I mean, it's not enough. I got I to gotta find somebody else. So. <laughs> More help. Okay, so um, let's, let's just do a little bit back up. Your background was not in sales, but your background was bartending and waitress and uh, any other kind of jobs you've had. <laughs> That would characterize your background. <laughs> I started working when I was like 13. I had a little job at the Boys and Girls Club. I'd watch like, you know, kids, stuff like that. But yeah, so I started when I was, I started at Applebee's when I was 17. So I was a waitress and a bartender. I wasn't old enough to be a waitress. So I was a hostess. I was a hostess. And then I was old enough, I turned 18, so I was a waitress and a bartender. Then I turned 21, and I was a waitress when I was 18, and then I turned 21, and then I was a bartender. So 
I just kind of moved up. So most of your career has been Applebee's. Half my life was Applebee's. (laughs) Half my life. That's all I knew. Yeah. So. And you've got a little boy that you have, I guess, essentially half custody with. So sometimes you're working, you're in your business with him, whether he's at your house or whether he's vacationing with you. And then other times when his dad has him, you're full time kicking butt, hitting the numbers. Correct. I have sole custody of my son. So he goes on visits. So So that he goes visits based on your prerogative. Correct. So he goes to his dad's every other weekend and he goes to his dad's on Wednesdays. Okay. For five hours. And then the summers kind of split up and we do segments. So that is why I've had this opportunity in two weeks. So I still got like, I got today up until Saturday morning to do 10,000 a day. So I'm going to be over a hundred thousand. I should be at like 160, 140, 150 around there. I don't know. My math is probably off, but yeah, if I'm doing 10, 10 a day, I'll be way over a hundred thousand. I'm fired up. You know, I mean, like, it's crazy to me, Andy, because when I first started, I could never even dream of doing 100000 in a year, let alone is just, and then you get there and it's so much easier. I mean, I mean, really, you're shooting for 140000 submitted production, like 160 or 170 applications in 14 days. That's right. I know it's just crazy it really is I mean it's crazy because I never you got to set a goal Andy and you got to get there right so what do you have to do to get there that's what you got to figure out but just a month ago my goal was 5,000 a day and I thought it was awesome to write 35,000 in a week Like, that's not awesome anymore. Like, you change your mindset. Because if I did 35,000 in a week, I would be mad. Like, I would be mad at myself because that's not my goal anymore. And I think that's where some people fall behind is they make a goal and then they're like, oh, you know, I did this, this amount. So guess what I get to do? I get to take next week off. You can't do that because... Other people are still working. So you're going to fall behind. So, yeah. All right. Well, we want to get to the how, but trying to establish where she's coming from. She's been with us, Mike and Noel, what, 24 months. So she's real new to insurance, although she knows the products well. What else established where she is and who she is um, before we get into the how, Mike and Noel? Is there any questions I'm missing that I should be asking her? Um, I think it, a lot of people, I think it's, it's cool where she came from. She started off as a lead. And when we talk about building relationships and debt, mm-hmm. she came from a lead and a sale, one, two, three, four relationships and debt. Um, and uh, you, we, I think from there, she started part-time, very part-time. Like she didn't want to work leads. I suggest, so she said, do I, I can remember it. And I do a terrible Megan impression. I'm like, <laughs> have to get the leads. <laughs> Can I just sell the people I know? So she was selling the people I mean she knew first off. Um she got a lot of you know warm market yeah initially and part time for a full year. How much money did you save in that first year that you just worked part time? Like you're working like two days every other week. How much did you, did you I save? saved I saved twenty thousand. I saved 20,000 while you were working part-time. So you were still full-time at Apple. And that's not what I made. That's just what I saved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So So you were were full-time at Applebee's the first year and just doing this part-time part-time because you were Applebee's. And so I was selling to all my customers at Applebee's. So when Mike's like, you think you need leads? I'm like, how much are they? And he's like, 
well, you probably the A leads run about twenty five dollars. I'm like twenty five dollars. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I ain't spending that. Like I was somebody, Andy, that put probably like five dollars in my gas tank at a time because I hated spending that money. I'm like, God, like because the way I thought, Andy which I mean, it makes sense. So you fill up your gas tank, which I mean, I don't think like this anymore, but you fill up your gas tank. And I thought, what if I hit a deer? What if I get into a wreck? Then I just spent, I just like threw out 20 bucks right out the window because I'm going to have to get a new vehicle. I mean, like, that's just ridiculous. You know, I'm just like, I'm constantly thinking, right? Constantly thinking. I'm like, I am not putting 20 bucks in my gas tank, let alone spending $25 on a piece of paper. Like, you know, I mean, like your mind, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but what happened that really changed my mindset, like, um, so I was engaged. So I was engaged. All right. And my fiance told me, Andy, my fiance told me, you quit your Applebee's job. I will pay for the bills and you just do the insurance part time to get some money. And I'm like, OK, I mean, I hated I hated my Applebee's job. I hated it. And so I'm like, OK, you know, OK, so then our relationship did not work out. It didn't work out. So I had to make a choice, Andy. I'm like, well, am I going to step it up in the insurance or am I going to go back to Applebee's? I ain't going back to Applebee's. So my choice was I got to do something. I got to do something to make this work. And having that pressure and being a single mom not being able to pay for my bills, having that pressure, I never wanted to be in that situation. So, you know, I thank my ex fiance. I'm like, thank you. Because if it wasn't for that, I would probably still be at Applebee's. So I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. You know, just like when I filled out that mortgage protection lead after I bought my home. I just wanted to make sure my son was taken care of, Andy. I just wanted to make sure because I have been close to death several times. So I've been I, close to death. So I, when I was 13, like 12 or 13, it started when I was in the fifth grade. Um, I had an eating disorder. And I still, I mean, like, when you're diagnosed with alcoholism or eating disorder, that's something you're going to struggle with for the rest of your life. So it had got me because I was going to be, I was going to be the best with the eating disorder. I was going to be the best. You know what I'm saying? You I compare say, yourself. The win, you wanted to be the most eating disordered person there was. That's right. <laughs> you want to be number one at eating disorder. That is right. And so you compare yourself. I know it sounds crazy. It really does. So when you see somebody else that you know has an eating disorder, you're comparing yourself, right? Like, man, I mean, it's weird, but it's true. And so I would compete with myself about that. So what am I going to do? So you wanted to get the insurance because you knew you have a lot of addictions and these addictions could cause your death and you want to make sure your little boy was taken care of. That's, right. that's really why you filled out the lead. That's why I filled out the lead. Which eventually led to you coming and work with the Alliance and seeing all our leads and all our products and all those things. Yeah, exactly. All right. And a drug addiction. I had both. So I would go back and forth. But yeah, I mean, Andy, I've addicted. been... Now you're addicted to selling and addicted to helping people and addicted to putting policies in place. Exactly. And, you know, and I have been to where there was 
so many times that I would go to sleep and not know if I would wake up the next day. So many times, you know, I mean, that is how strong my addiction was. And so thank God for the Alliance, like, because not only do I not have to worry about providing for my son, because that's been a fear of mine, because I am, I'm a single mom and I love being a single mom. Like, I love it. You know, I worry about me and my son, but, you know, thank God I filled out that mortgage protection lead because who would have thought that filling out that little piece of paper would have changed our lives so drastically. So it's really been an answered prayer for sure. Cause who knows where I would be if I didn't fill out that piece of paper. So, um, so you, so now your goal of six figures income, I mean, six figures in the bank, you gotta be getting close to that. Yeah, that's right. I'm about, um, I'm about 15,000 short, six figures in my bank account. So about a week, I'll be there. That's crazy talk. Um, Fired up. Okay, so let's let's see if we can give them some how-to, okay? Um, now you are buying leads. Now you do, now you do, um, you have a current client base. How many clients or how many people do you have on you? What's your numbers? What's your client base now? Um, when I look at the arc, I think I'm at about 600 clients. Five, 600 five, clients. 50, 600. It's really not that many. When, when you first, so what I understand now is when you sell a policy off of a lead, Facebook lead, final expense lead, you don't care. When you sell it, you go back to them pretty dead gum quick, right? And, and add on products, child products, Medicare supplement, or the hospital indemnity. Did you do that in the beginning when you first had clients? Did you know all the product mix, or has this been something that you improved on every month or every day? So, no. So when I first started... I was typically just helping them out with the life insurance or the mortgage protection, Uh, you know, and then Mike told me, he's like, you know, what's crazy, Megan, is now that you've been with us for almost a year, he's like, you start doing your reviews and that's going to help you out a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing those. And I started making so much more money off of my reviews, Andy. I'm like, this is awesome. And so I thought to myself, why not? Like, why don't we just not wait a year, right? Your yearly reviews, like, why are we waiting? Because this is amazing. Because one, it's like your clients already like you. They already trust you. You already know all, you know their social, you know all that. You don't have to go through asking them all that information all over again. It's like, so then we started doing hospital indemnity plans. Like I learned about the accidental products. So first, like I would pick one thing. So that's the accidental. So, right, so they have their life insurance. I went back after I wrote one on myself, I went back to every single one of my clients under the age of 71 and help them out with an accidental plan. Every single one of them. And so then you learn a different product, hospital indemnity. So like constantly I'm thinking who qualifies for this hospital indemnity and who could benefit from it. I mean, the amazing thing is, is that we just keep adding on all these different products and it's just there's so many things that we can help our clients out with so I can't wait till we keep adding on more you know what I mean it's I I do so you keep you're adding clients you're still getting leads I understood you I understand that even this past eight days 
you bought some old, old Facebook leads and went directly to the house, never met these people before in your life, and just showed up, knocked on the door, started talking to them, built rapport, showed empathy, showed respect, got in the house, and, and sold policies, and you're getting referrals from those people. Is that right? Yeah. Do you use the ERS method or yep. do you just ask for I, no. I use the ERS. I do. So you go, go back to your old clients or your existing clients and get more referrals there. So mm -hmm. you just have this endless list of people you're talking to and getting in their house. Rapido. Is that what I'm yeah. hearing? Yeah. Yeah. And I actually I did something different um, this past week that okay. I didn't typically do. Um, and so I got all these leads and, you know, dollar Facebook leads. So I had about 400, over 400 of these. I think it was closer to five, 500. And I'm like, I remember telling Mike, I'm like, I have never had this many leads in my life. Like, what? In the world am I going to do with all these like before like I never had that many leads in a year Andy I'm like so it's like I made a decision I'm like I'm going to try to get to every single one of these leads but then I thought to myself I'm not going to call them I'm just going I'm just going there because you know I was cutting back on my dialing time. So I just figured I'm not going to dial. I'm just going, just going. So that's, that's what I did. And it's worked out so far. So just keep doing what works until it doesn't work. And then you change it. So uh, I just talked to one of my top guys. I mean, top sales guys, he's in the top 50. And he said this week, because of you, he showed up at a house unannounced for the first time in his life. He was so uncomfortable. He had never done that. Just showed up somebody's house and knocked on it. And he had a crazy success, sold policies. He was just shocked that you could be nice and just go to a person's house. Yeah. I mean, very rarely do I have somebody tell me, well, um, you shouldn't have just came over here. You should have called me. Okay. I, you know, I mean, people do say that, but when you just knock, be like, hey, hey, Mary, I've been trying to get a hold of you. I called a couple days ago and nobody answered. So I was just right down the road. I was helping out somebody else and I saw this and your house was right here. So I figured I'd just swing by and here you are. I mean, like, because you're setting up that where you didn't call they are not going to say that because you have did a call. You have a because. Because I was close by, because I was right down the road, because I was so close, I thought I'd just stop on you, because I've called her several times. So you've given them a lot of reasons or excuses, you might say. Right. People are, some people are good excuses. In this case, you want to be good as excuses why you just showed up and why they need to chat with you. Right. Right, right. I'm getting tons right. of questions. Mike and Noel, you might be too. This is from another top, top producer. He says, crazy, how is she doing it? Listen, here's the question. What kind of things is she asking about in her first appointment to set up the second appointments? Still close the first one, not mess up the first sale, close it, but yet you're learning things you can sell them in the future. So what are you Tell us some things, how you do that, how you balance the, I got to close one, but I got to set them up for number two. Right. Um, so I'll give you like an example I had, because I think that'll help. So I had a client, it was a dollar lead. I just went over there, like I said, um, him and his wife were both there and I helped him out with life insurance. He did... 10,000, 10,000, you know, um, he was older. I think he was like 75. So he did 10,000. Um, and then he also said that he did have a policy that was worth 25,000, but all he could do was 10,000. 
So I wrote that down. So he's got, he had a policy for 25,000. His wife has a policy, which we reviewed for 25,000. He told me a year, a year and a half ago, he went into the hospital um, because he thought he had a heart attack, which he did not, but he thought he did. So I'm remembering these things. I'm writing them down because if you're doing a life insurance application, then you've got to ask those things anyways, right? So you've got to ask if they have cancer. And then what I do is I add in the question about, do you have cancer in your family? That's not on the application, but I'm asking them anyways. I'm pretending. You're not, like trying, to, you're not trying to put more stuff on the app and mess them up, you're trying to think, what else do I need to okay. sell them later? Yeah. You don't attack, yep. you don't attack right then. Nope. You just save that ammunition. Exactly. So you're so I'm gathering, there. you're gathering health histories, what they do histories, if they fell down, if they had if thought he had a heart attack, which means right. which means that is a high, high, high concern of his. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So I'm gathering all this stuff. So I focus on what the lead is for. That's what I'm focusing on. Okay. That's and then, okay. and you know, I mean, they're telling me like, cause I'll ask, do you guys have grandkids? Do you have great grandkids? I show them pictures of my boy. Right. So it's like, I'm setting myself up. I know they have a two-year-old grandson that they watch. I know that. So I'm writing that down. But again, I am focusing on why I am there in the first place. Um, and I do that. And then I tell them, I am going to call you here in the next couple of days and let you know the status on the application. I'm going to let you know if it's approved or, you know, sometimes, sometimes they come back and they have extra questions that they need to ask, but I'm going to be in contact with you. So write my number down. So when I call, you know who I am. And so then I call him and I say, um, whether I know that they're approved or not, I say, Hey, everything looks great on your application or you're approved. Whatever the case is, everything looks good on your application, but there is something that I wanted to talk to you about. And I know I was there for quite a while and you guys had some other stuff going on and stuff like that. But there was something that I wanted to talk to you about and I had some questions for you. Um, I'm going to be back in the area on Thursday. Either I can swing by around two or if the evening works better, I can swing by around six. So then they tell me, and then that is my opportunity that I'm going to go back and pick that one thing that I really wanted to talk to them about anyways. So I look at those things and I think, what's going to benefit him more, right? You know, is it going to be the hospital indemnity plan? Is it going to be a heart attack and stroke policy? You know, I mean, that's what I'm going to talk to them about. What, so you're thinking, what's going to make the biggest impact or the highest ROI to this client? Mm -hmm. Whether it's the grandchildren, whether it's an accident, or whether it's a hospital indemnity. Right. So whatever you think is going to trigger them the most is exactly. what I'm hearing. Exactly. You don't tell them that. You just right. say there's something. By the way, I mean, there's so many things that you do, like you emphasize the G's. There's some things that I need to talk to you. It, it, it's a great method that you've naturally developed. Um, almost like I, I bet if I would come to Applebee's, I would have bet I would have got every dessert. I would have got coffee. I would have got after dinner drink. I mean, because I mean, I can just see you doing these add-ons while I'm sitting there at Applebee's because you're thinking, what do I like? What did I favor? What did we say we almost got? Right. And when you do it, when you do it so much, Andy, it's like, like if, if people like me, even like doing something so much, 
It's like you're training yourself. It's in your brain. So it's automatic to where you don't really even have to think about it anymore. You just do it. It's just natural. Well, if we can get more people naturally doing this, we're going to have a lot of people naturally having an MBA, a massive bank account. Have. And um, that's, that's the goal here. So if people have questions that you're sending to me, I'm going to try to relay them or to Mike or Noel, and we'll try to relay them. And because you don't have time to take 100 phone calls. I've got people saying, hey, can she talk to me a minute? I'm like, we're going to try to get this down in a, in a, a video interview and ask these questions. <coughs> Andy? I, I was going to say, Mike, you know, I'm going to turn it over to you in a minute because you guys have been dealing with her every single day. So what, what are we missing? What else would, can we take advantage of with all the other salespeople across the country? I think the first thing is to understand. So somebody might be thinking, how can I get to where Megan's at now? I think the first thing is don't compare yourself to Megan now. Let's go back to Megan 18 months ago or two years ago. When Megan, we go back to Megan two years ago, she was still part time. She was doing the same thing before she even knew how to use her health license. She was, with the exception of the accidental death in the children's whole life policy. She was doing the same thing with accidental death and whole life. And then it was about literally a year and three months ago, a year and four months, it was by March or April of 2019, she called me and says, what's this critical advantage policy with Mutual of Omaha? And I was like, hell, I don't know. She said, well, I just sold it. I was like, okay. And then like she was wondering because we didn't even have it coordinated with the ARC yet. How do I track my pending commissions? Literally it was, she went out and found it. And then next thing you know, I think Mutual of Omaha told me she sold 122 apps of that last year. So she found one product and then learned to figure out a need, but it started first with children's and grandkids policies, then accidental deaths, then it was the critical illness, critical advantage policy. Then she got her AHIP certification last fall and started talking to Ivy. Ivy taught her about Medicare Advantage and Ivy taught her about the Medico hospital indemnity plan. So now it's like, so over the course of two years, her portfolio, her quiver got bigger. So she didn't just start and say, I'm going to sell everything to everybody on day one. It started with one and then gradually got a little bit bigger and a little bit more. And so again, it, but then it's relentless use of the basics is what's got her to where she's at. And asking questions, nonstop asking questions, nonstop. I'm, I'm getting <laughs> great feedback on what you're saying about how you how you're finding focusing on what's now but thinking about the future i think it's that that just hammered people that, that hit home the text i'm getting the other thing talk about this megan you already got a social security number you already got your date of birth i mean you, the application is practically filled out already by danielle your assistant right right I mean, like, I got all the information I need. You don't need like, I really don't even need to ask them anything. All you need is a signature. That's right. We got their bank account information. All we need is a signature and them a nod and for them to be committed to that being drafted out of their account. And it's a done deal. And yeah. already, I mean, and it's already, like the simplest thing. In, and they already believe in you. Say it again. It's the simplest thing. I mean, it really is. Um, I was looking at the questions. How did I did, did how did I do ten thousand when I was in Florida? I mean, that's what I did. I made a list of what I was going to do, and I had a plan as to what I was going to help clients with that I hadn't already helped them out with. So I'm talking to them, like I did that call with that Medico Hospital Indemnity client several several months ago I was literally on the phone with him for seven minutes seven minutes and I helped him and his wife out like it does not take a long time so I'm gathering all that because I already had a plan of what I was going to do fill out the application send Danielle while she's here I'm like hey Danielle I need you to go here get a signature if they cannot figure out the email signature process if they cannot figure out DocuSign on their own, then I'm sending Danielle over there to get a signature. Let's, you're, 
let's let's do this, Noel. Will you be the client, Noel? And and you've done this with her and let her just do a final expense lead or any kind of lead. Um well, let me back up. Megan, what would you say? Are you 50% you book appointments and go see them? I, I'm not saying, I know the past seven days, you've just been going. No no mm -hmm. booking appointments. Yeah. Uh, but it's a 50-50. Do you book 50% of the appointments and go 50% of the time? Or is it a higher percentage that you book? Um, not trying to confuse you. I'm just No, typically like before, are you talking about before this past week? Yeah. For this past week, I was setting the appointment and then okay. going there. Then if I have a client that wasn't home when they said they were going to be, I would have a backup lead that I couldn't get a hold of. So I already know what my next house is going to be. Like they weren't there. Sally lives down the road. I've already got that planned out. Let's let's uh, let's do this. Let's let's do one. The initial conversation uh, from a lead, Noel, if you'll do it, and then um, let's do one where you're knocking on Noel's door, and Mike and Noel come to the door. But use a client from your past. You know what I'm saying? Like, like who you're think about a a, a phone call that okay. they down. Okay, uh, so I've already sold. A policy to Noel. Is that what you're so saying? No, let's do one you've never met, Noel. I've never met Noel and I'm just knocking on her door. Let's do the phone call first. Okay, the booking the appointment. You got if I was going to call him first. Let me ask you this. Uh, okay, let's back up. Final expense leads. You buy okay. some of those. Right. You get some brand new and you get some old. Is that a true statement? Correct. Yes. Okay. Well, let's do a brand new final expense lead because that's the one that we seem to have an abundance of and a lot of more opportunities that we can produce them. And I've got some men, <laughs> I use that term, <laughs> that's some men that they're scared to call them. They don't know what to say. I'm sure there are some ladies that don't know what to say when they're calling a final expense lead. So could you kind of walk us through how you get in that house on a brand new final expense lead. So ringy, yeah. ringy, Noel answers. You start talking, Megan. Perfect. And uh, okay, y'all ready for this? All right. Ringy, ringy. Ring. Hello. Noel? Yep. Yeah. Hey, this is Megan. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. Thank you. I was calling about, it looks like you and Mike, Mike's your husband, right? Yeah. All right. It looks like you and Mike had recently just filled out this card that you would have gotten the mail. On the card, it said the new 2020 benefit information. Do you recall that for Indiana citizens? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Gotcha. So, and I got your age down here as 37. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, and it looks like Mike here, he's about 60. Yeah, that's right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Perfect. All right. So it's about the state regulated program, like I had said, and it was for burial or cremation. And my job, Noel, is I'm just supposed to get you the information. Um, and so I am going to be in the area. Saturday around two o'clock and four o'clock. And I just didn't know what time worked best for you on Saturday. Probably earlier, two o'clock. Two o'clock? Okay, perfect. All right. Well, can you do me a favor? Can you tell Mike that I am coming? Put me down on your calendar so you don't forget about me. I'm putting you on mine right now. And my name's Megan. And I drive a gray SUV, and I will see you guys Saturday around 2, okay? Okay. All right, Megan. All right. Sounds like a plan. I'll be excited to meet you guys. All right. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. It's just, we could, we could dissect that. It's just so clear and simple, and it's clear that you know something about them. I, I just love it. Um, 
I, I also think that she's very friendly and personable. On the, um, you could tell her personality changed just with doing that to get into that role of making that phone call. You know what I'm saying, Andy? Do like, what do you see, Noel, when people think they're copying her, but they're not copying her? I think it has to do with not as much the word, the words they say, but how they say those words and how they come across on the other end of the phone. They they think they're copying the script, but they're not performing the script. Right. And they're not playing off of the other person um, sometimes, like not acknowledging or noticing background sounds, noises, tones, or whatever that is, because it's something else I'll pick up on. So they're not creating the feel that may right. create. She feel you feel like she's listening. You feel like she knows you. Yeah, I, I don't know, Meg. This might be tougher for you, but what do you when you're coaching Annette or you're coaching um, Chris? What do you what, when they they get more objections than you? What do you think they're doing different, Megan? What would you say is their biggest weakness or the biggest common mistake that people make? Um, like on the phone, I would say, I mean, you have to, no matter what kind of day you had, I mean, you have to be like, smile, smile when you're on the phone, because people see that people hear that on the other end. Like, you know, I think that's the number one thing I really do. Um, bring out your personality just by talking to them for a short period of time. I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, did I sound like somebody that was trying to um, sell you something? No, I'm just trying to get information. I'm giving you information about something that you had requested. I'm verifying the ages. you like, it looks like you and Mike had filled out this card that you got in the mail. You had sent it back in and what the card said was. So, I mean, like, I'm setting all that up and I'm giving them a choice to pick is two o'clock or four o'clock. What would work better? So I'm not giving them a choice as if I can come over or not. I'm giving them a choice to pick when is the better time. So it kind of like switches their brain and thinking, do I really want her to come over or is two o'clock or four o'clock going to work better? I mean, like, so I'm not giving them the chance to tell me, no, don't come over. I'm giving them the opportunity to pick the time that I'm going to come over. She's not seeking permission. Get, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, she's not seeking permission. Uh, that's a big thing. You know, she doesn't need permission. She understands the letter gave her permission. She's just confirming the time to make sure they'll be there. Um, I'm just getting crazy questions. Um, let's establish this. If you're calling 10 final expense leads, are you booking every single one of them, Megan? Or do you get the phone? Do you get hung up on ever? Yeah. And you miss? Yeah. So you don't yeah. book everyone. You just keep going. I just keep going. I just keep going. And if I don't right. book it, then I'm going there. So you anyway. will go to the house. I will. So Even if they get mad, will. have no patience with you, hang up on you, you're still <laughs> going to try to put that smile in front of them. That's right. Because, you know, you know, a couple things that I found out, Andy, the people that are rude on the phone or hang up on you, you get to their house and they're completely different. Like, I want to give you an example. Can I give you an example real please, quick? Please. I'm an example person. Okay, so I helped out this, her name is Rachel, and it was about a year ago. And I was calling her, calling her, no answer. Um, because I wanted, like, that's when I was only doing life insurance. Like, I wanted to talk to her about all the other things, but she wouldn't answer her dang phone, right? And so <laughs> she's probably thinking, Oh, God, that Megan girl's calling. <laughs> so, so she wouldn't answer her phone. So somebody, like, told me about the Hushed app. I'm like, this is genius. So Hushed app. 
you call with a different phone number. Ah. Sure enough, Rachel's, hello. I'm like, oh, hey, Rachel, it's Megan. How are you? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> like, thanks. <laughs> I'm glad I feel loved right now. I'm like, Rachel, I had some stuff I wanted to talk to you about, but I've tried to contact you. There was no answer. I've even tried coming over there. Nobody, yeah, my son works night, so he sleeps all day. I'm like, but she's like, but he gets home at like 2.30. I'm like, okay, are you home right now? Yeah. So I went over there. Right there. Yeah. 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 Right there. Because I was already, I already knocked earlier and nobody freaking answered. So I've been trying, Andy, I've been trying to get a hold of this woman for like a month. A month. And so I went in there and thank God, thank God I did. So the cool thing is, is I sold her more life insurance. Her sister, I sold her sister more life insurance. Her sister's daughter said, hey, I can't do it today, but can you come back tomorrow? Because I really want to make sure that this mortgage is protected. I'm like, yeah, I sold the daughter a $200 premium smart UL the very next day. Then Mutual Omaha comes back and says, we need a picture of the driver's license for your client because we cannot verify them. And I'm like, oh gosh, you know, so I go over there. I'm like, hey, Marianne, I need a picture of your ID. And so thank God Mutual Omaha did that because I sold them two cancer policies. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you just keep going back and don't stop because somebody won't answer the phone. So she, at the beginning, was all like, hi, Megan. Crap, she got a new number. Like, But then she's like, I walk in the door, Andy, and she's like, you got to see this stuff I ordered from these catalogs. And I'm like, I'm your best friend now. The same person that wouldn't take your phone call. Exactly. The hush, hush, H-U-S-A, Hush app, which mm-hmm. I think there's several apps out there where you can have a different number from their same area code, yeah. different area code, and try try to get in touch with somebody. Yeah. But it sounds like now you've kind of adopted the method of you probably going to go over there anyway and quit, quit hassling with trying to get a Hush app. You'll just go over there and knock on the door. Right. Uh, you, you must have a concentration too. You get final expense leads, Facebook leads, old Facebook leads, old final expense, old mortgage protection. So you've got a lot of clients in areas when you go to. So you try to, sounds like to me, you really try to capitalize either knowingly or accidentally. You have a lot of clients in different pockets around the city. Is this Mike, as an engineer, do you see that happening with her intentionally or unintentionally? Yeah, I mean, her very intentional. Her GMR is in two pretty modest counties. Her GMR is for seven A leads a week. And then she grabs a bang, bang order here and there when she's having a bigger week or if there's like we had the dollar Facebook leads. Those are really dependent for three primary sources. Occasionally, she'll do an instant purchase when she sees occasionally she steps out of her two primary counties, but 95% of the time she's in those two counties and uh, she's just boxing them out. I also, I want to go back before I even forget something that somebody could have missed as they were listening. When she talked about having to get the amendment taken care of from you or the, the driver's license verified from mutual law, so many agents would fret be upset and be annoyed. And to be clear, Megan was annoyed that she had it, but she got over that very quickly and said, okay, I'm going to go over there. While I'm there, here's another point of contact. I'm going to turn this into another deal. And so it's like, that's something that Megan does. In fact, Megan, what what happens every time a client calls to ask you a question? When a client calls you to ask you a question, Megan, what happens? They end up doing something else. They're they're in for it now. (laughs) They're going to be like, 
Oh, Megan's your agent. If you have any questions, don't call her. What? <laughs> Why? Why do you say that? What do you do specifically? So if a client calls, asks you a question about their draft date or something about their policy, what happens? I end up helping them out with a hospital indemnity plan or an accidental or, you know, and I'll just say, oh, I'm glad you called because I got to tell you about something that's really helped my family out. Have you ever heard of a hospital indemnity plan? I'm glad you called. (laughs) (laughs) Do you ever answer a question about the draft dates? I guess you ask. Yeah, yeah, I get to that. You you get to that, but in your time, but you, you just got a free lead when they call you. Yeah. Most people are in a panic when somebody calls, oh, it's a client that might want to cancel. You're like fired up because now you get to <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, well, All right, so we you won't this. call me again, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> got another. Hey, hey, this is a good question. When you're on the phone, um, how much are you considering their budget? They've already paid $60 a month. Do you even consider their budget and how much money they have? Or are you, are you just are you just selling the value of the product and let them figure it out? Um, a little bit of both, Andy. So I would say that if a client tells you up front, well, I can do $60 a month, but that's going to be hard for me. So when you go back or even there, ask the client, okay, Sally, what do you get paid on social security a month? What, how much is your electric bill? Like how much is your car payment? How much is all this stuff? So you know what Sally's getting paid? You subtract the rest to see how much Sally has left. Ah, you gotta listen to what she's saying. You use the facts. Right. That's a CTS. You're a right. fact finder. So, Sally, we know you have $400 left over after your bills are paid. And, you know, subtract $100 from going to the grocery store, maybe wanting to go out to eat. So, roughly, comfortably, you could spend about $150 to make sure your family's taken care of. Because I would never put you in a position that I don't feel like you can pay for it. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's all right there. So, she's like, oh, well, she's right. Where the heck's all my money going? You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you've got to... Priority. You're helping them. You're helping them prioritize insurance first, and then whatever they have left over for all the beer and pizza and bull crap and their right. Amazon orders and all that. Right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that that's crazy. Hey, let's do the let's do the the knocking on the door. So you're knocking on the door, and these two come to the door. Whether let's pick it. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's an old Facebook lead. So these guys are old Facebook leads. You bought these dollar leads. It could be, a, I guess, it'd be the same difference as a final expense or mortgage protection. So let's hear how that goes. So okay, so on, okay, I'm on excited about this one. <laughs> so I pull up, I see the house, and then I see it, and I'm like, perfect. There are vehicles right there. So where do I park? I don't pull in the driveway. I might park behind, like, here's the road. Here's the house. I might park this way so they don't see me pull up, right? Because if they see you, they're like, oh, my God, who's that? Right? So they don't see me pull up. So I just walk up there, knock on the door. Come up from the side of the house and see you just pop up. <laughs> or do you start at the door? I just park down the road a little bit, and then I walk on the sidewalk. Up the driveway. Yeah, up the driveway. <laughs> okay, so Mike and Noel are in there watching Price is Right. <laughs> they, got their, they got the walkers, right? <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. So no, not gonna, yeah. All uh, right. Well, here we go. 
So she answers the door and I say, Noel. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, this is Megan. I'm Megan. Sorry, I'm not calling you. I'm Megan. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. And I have the lead in my hand and I said, hey, I tried calling a few days ago. Um, I couldn't get a hold of you. They gave this to me because somebody tried reaching you and nobody could get a hold of you. And I couldn't get a hold of you either. So I just swung on by. So I'm really glad. I'm really glad you're here. Um, But I just have this information to get to you if you got a couple seconds. Uh, Well, let me get my husband. Perfect. Perfect. Mike? Yes. Awesome. Hey, Mike. So they gave me this information here. It looks like you and your wife, you guys requested some information some time ago. Um, Nobody was able to reach you. And I live right here in Louisville, Kentucky. So they gave this to me to see if I could reach you. And I'm so glad you guys are home. Um, So if you guys got a couple seconds, I'd love to go over this with you. Okay. Perfect. Do you and then, I'm just gonna take, um, hey, what? what do you bring with you when you're knocking on a door? What all do you bring with you? Do you have a briefcase? Do you have applications? And yeah. what are you wearing typically when you're knocking on doors? So I have um, my laptop bag with all my applications in it. I got my laptop in it. I got everything. But, um, yeah, it's just a laptop. Yeah, like a it's like bag. a purse. Kind of like a book bag, purse. Yeah. I am bringing in a suitcase. I think that's a little intimidating. Um, I'm not a backpack person. But, I mean, like, honestly, and I don't know, like, the way I would think is if you have, like, a laptop bag or, like, a purse or something, like, that's more natural than carrying a big backpack because people are wondering what the heck is in that chick's backpack? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I would be intimidated to the fact like carrying, you know what I mean? I mean, like natural, right? Um, So that's- What do you wear? Do you you have on casual stuff? I wear my dress, wear my dress. That's what I wear. I mean, like, I wear, that's what I wear every day. So I really don't dress up. I don't feel like, but I mean, yeah. I mean, on your standard, cute little dress. Wear my dress. Not too short, not too long, just. Right. Cool. Right. You want to look nice. Um, You don't want to look like too businessy, like, you know, but you don't want to look sloppy either. So. Um, and you know, one of the things is we bounced around here, but all this, I'm getting hammered with questions, Mike and Noel, um, and, and Megan, I think people create their objections, like the way you approach people, you don't get as many objections as other people, right? That's, that's one of the things I think is critical. Um, Michael, let me, let me let you ask her that and talk about how people, create their objections but does she how does she handle objections it's two aspects how does she not create objections and then if she does get them how she handles them yeah so i think the first thing may if we go back what are some of the things you've learned to do that helps prevent objections like how did you learn to not ask permission about how to be assumptive and lead the client. I think if I were to ask that, I think something that some people do is it starts off, what do you do to make sure you're not in, maybe you used to get objections, you learn how to prevent them. Right. So when I first started, um, I remember that you taught me that you have to be the parent, which was really, really hard for me. Like, I mean, like, how am I supposed to be the parent? to these 60 and 70 year olds. I'm like, but not having to have permission to write applications. So the one thing that I started doing that I believe has helped the most is 
we, I'm just trying to see if I can get you approved. So you can't make a decision today anyways. Like I am just trying to see if I can get you guys approved. And then once I know, which typically takes about a week, and then I call you. And then you can kind of go up, you can kind of go down on the amount. I'm just trying to see if I can get you approved because right now is going to be the cheapest time with the age you are with the health that you're in. Because if you want to wait for like a year, it's going to be more if we can even get you approved. What if you had a heart attack? Then you decide, man, I think I'm going to get life insurance. Well, don't be, you know, like, don't be like uh, Brad here that wanted to wait, had a heart attack. Then he calls me and it's too late. You know, I mean, like I'm constantly talking about other clients. And if you don't have any, make them up, make them up. Like they're not going to know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, it's just, you, you can't make a decision today, even if you wanted to. So like, it's all about control. You're, you're giving them control. They don't feel like they are making a decision. They don't have to choose because all you're doing is finding out what they would lean more towards to see if we can get you approved because you're giving them the control. They think they are in control. So if they're in control, they're going to like you more. You're not taking that control away from them. I address that. Some people, I think they use that word just seeing if you can get approved. But she uses that, but she also gives them 97 reasons that they need to have it. Yeah, I think she's, yeah, I think so, and I think it's important because I've heard some people say, we're just sending the application. Oh, and you've got 30 days to cancel it afterwards. Like I have some people that they're using the free look period is like, Almost like now it's like you're giving them the out instead of saying they're using it as the out. And I hear that as like, no, and Megan's not doing that. She's saying, hey, listen, um, there's nothing to decide right now. All we can figure out is which way are you leaning towards? Let's see if we can get you approved. And then you can make some decisions if this is the right way to go. And and it's and based on what you told me about your health. And now is a great time. And boy, you've got this birthday coming up in, in August. Who? We really work times a tick and we got to get you in before this. Birth. Oh, you, oh, your birthday was in, you know, you've got a half birthday coming up here at the end of July. We've got to find a way to get you in under the wire. I mean, it's, it's creating urgency and a need, but then, Hey, but it's okay. You're not locked in anything. We're just trying to see if we can get you in the door and get you through. We've got to fill out this application to see if you can be approved. Megan, what happens when, when you get to the bank info and they tell you, well, I thought we were just being approved. Why do we got to give you our bank info? Okay. Well, Mike, we are just trying to see if we can get you approved. But as you can see on my tablet here, if I do not put that information in, it will not let me submit it. So if you want to make sure Noelle is taken care of and we want to see if I can get you approved, I'm gonna need that information or it's gonna automatically de be declined. And not only that, you pick your date, Mike. So say today is the 14th, but I know you get paid social security on the third. Your payment wouldn't even be set up until the fourth. And like I said, it takes typically about a week to see that you're approved. And I'm gonna call you in a week and let you know that you're approved. So even by that time, we can still touch base. See if you need to go up, if you need to go down before that date even hits. But we cannot see if we can get this approved without filling out the entire application. 
You're killing it. Hey, so let's review. In the last eight days, you've submitted over a hundred applications. Is that right? Yeah. Completely filled out, signed. Uh, a lot of them e outs. Mm -hmm. A lot of them in-person signatures. Yeah. Any ideas at 50-50? Is it 90% of the apps, 90% handwritten? Any feel for that? Um, it's about 95% electronic applications. Okay. 95%. All right. Is that because are you uh, now are they over 95% over the phone or are you in-house doing electronic applications? I'm in the house. Doing so, electronic applications. Boom. So you're in the house. Go ahead, Mike. I was going to say, I want to I want to kind of map out what her day's been looking like, as I understand it, because I think there's some, I want to create some clarity here. So, Megan, so let's start with, so you went out on a drive-by. Let's see you guys. Hey, hey, what time did she get up? She get up by 9, 30, 10, 11 o'clock since she's self-employed. Yeah. What time do you wake up, Megan? I wake up about 6.30. About uh, six thirty. It's illegal. It's illegal in some states for people to work that early. And I go to bed at like one, one a.m. Okay, so you're up at six thirty, and so if you're I, going to do a drive by, we talk about the planning that goes before the day. Okay, Real let's, quick, let's, let's, let's do this. This is a big part yeah. of it is your planning process ahead of time. It's not like you're just getting your leads and you're going to door knock. There is a game plan ahead of time. Talk about the right. plan you do from, say, 10 to midnight or 10 to 1 a.m. What are you okay. doing in that time? So when I get home, um, I get all my leads from the county that I'm going to be in. So, like, if I'm doing Crawfordsville today, I got all my leads already set up. Crawfordsville is where I'm going. Um, then the night before, I make a list. Um, and I make a list. I always try to get 20. What clients do I have? Um, you know, what clients could benefit from what clients do I have that don't have a hospital indemnity plan? What clients do I have that don't have a critical illness plan? What clients do I have that are telling me that they were having a grandbaby on the way? Like, what clients do I have already that I can work in to my drive-bys that I'm doing. Like, so I already have a list. And that's why, like, Mike, when I call you at, like, 11 o'clock and I said, I've done 5,000 annual premium, it's because I planned it. I had everything wrote out what I was going to do, and then I just do it. Like, I mean, it's a plan. Every day I do this. Um you know, like what client said that they can only do this much, but they might be interested in getting a little bit more. What client said that? Like, I know I got that road down. So I'm going to call that person tomorrow. So you have a list of at least 20 that you're going to go by their house. They don't know you're coming and you're going to put them in between your appointments. Or call right. them while you're driving. Okay. Exactly. So, all right. So, 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 we, so the list of your current clients. Have you grabbed the? Once you've got the list, you go grab the folder so you're carrying them with you, or do you just have the list? How do you? How are you prepared so as you're carrying this list with you, what you're going to do? So I would grab their folder of their stuff, but typically, okay. like um, Cora Garrett, um, I'll just say her. Um, you know, she wants to make sure her son's taken care of. So we did an application on her son. Um, but I know, like, because she could only afford a cancer policy before, but she wanted to get something for her son. Um, so I wrote that down. And so I already have his information because it's in the e-application. So I know everything about them. So do I need to bring a folder with me? Probably not for that person, but I do set that up. Like I have a list of 15 folders upstairs that I carry around with me because if somebody's not home, I'm calling my backup people. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like I've got it. I've got them. So this is, these are backup people. So backups. So you've got your, your 20 list of 20 and then another backup list of folders on top of that. 
Okay. Right. Another question I had to come back and I'll switch over to the leads. Now you've got your lead pile that you're going to do. If you're doing drive bys, do you use a, an, an app? How do you organize the order in which you're going to these leads? Um, so Montgomery County, I just got all my Montgomery counties together. Mine, mine is a little bit different. Um, cause Montgomery County, I grew up here, so I know the County pretty well. Um, so all my Montgomery County leads, like I know the area that they're in, but you know, you do see what I'm saying? Um, so I've got all my Montgomery you know County it. leads together. So you just, you know the area, you know the so area. you can organize it by the section of the county and you just mentally lay it out. So you're not right. using an app to, to do this? No. Um, Tippecanoe County, I mean, like, their zip codes, if they pretty much have the same zip code, then they're pretty close together. So I look at that because I don't know Tippecanoe County as well as I know Montgomery County, but... I just put it on my maps. I mean, I know Mary lives here. I put it on my maps. Well, that's about 30 minutes away. What about Beth? Does Beth live closer? Oh, Beth lives 10 minutes away. I'm going there. Then I'll go see Mary. You know, I mean, like just constantly, just constantly going, you know, I mean, like, I think that has a lot to do with it. I mean, people, they don't just go. They don't just go, go, go. People are like, oh, well, let me, I need to go shopping in between. Or I I missed my show. My show is on at three o'clock. I got to go home to watch my show and then I go back out. Like, I mean, I don't stop um, until I get my 10,000. Okay. So come, you have, come oh, back to- I want to come back. Okay, so, so I'm going to come back. So we prepared. So we've got- our leads, we know geographically where we're going to drive to, whether you're using a map, you're looking, using an app, or you're just thinking about it. You've got your current clients. So now we go to our first appointment. Do you already have a bunch of appointments booked in these days already, or are you going out just knowing that you're going to do all these door knocks? You have a bunch of appointments. Uh, going that I'm going to do all these door knocks. Okay. That's what I've done here in the past. So let's say you drive to Joe and Mary's house. You door knock, you get them taken care of, you get in your car. What do you do next? Do you drive to your next appointment? Do you, do you plan your next door knock from there? Uh, yeah, I'll okay. drive and to the next door knock. Okay. And while you're driving to the next door knock, what are you doing? Um, I could be on the phone with Cora. Um, and I might say, hey, Cora. I know you were wanting to, I had a couple questions for you. I usually say that. Like, I got a couple questions for you. Are you home? You know, are you home? I'm in the area. Um, you know, I don't usually, like, if I'm doing drive-bys and wanting to connect with my prior clients, like, I'll just say, hey, I got a couple questions for you. Like, I'm not going to say, hey, I know you said you wanted to make sure that your son was taken care of. You home. I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not saying that because she might not want to do that right now. She might not want to do it today. But if I say, Hey, I got a couple questions and I was up here in Lafayette. Um, I didn't know if it was your bowling day today. Was that Wednesday? You know what I'm saying? Cause I know her, she bowls every Wednesday. You know what I mean? So I know not to get a hold of Cora on Wednesdays cause she's going to be bowling. I mean, <laughs> A lot of yours is just a lot of hers is knowing the clients too, Mike. Yeah, like she is. isn't just she isn't superficial. She's deep in how good she knows these people, man. This this question somebody said, you know, how does she handle when people say, "I thought we were just seeing if I could qualify after the policy is approved." I don't know that you get that objection, Megan. Can you tell us? Do you get that objection? Say that say, again. Thought we were just seeing if we could qualify mm -hmm. after you after the policy is approved. Do you ever get that? Uh -uh. Not not very often. No. Um, so I make it a point. Else? What's how that? Does she, how does she keep from getting that? Like I don't think people understand how in depth you sell them new policies. 
she's given a preponderance of evidence. Like, how does she avoid that? I know she's avoiding. I think there's two things. I'm going to try to ask this, but the first thing, Megan, is when you get people to apply, I think you've figured out that they need and want the coverage. So there's not a doubt over do they need something or do they want, like they're going to do something. Right. I think um, sometimes we see people that are, they're pushing for the application, but the client, they don't have a client wanting to do something. And they're maybe just bulldozing through that. But talk to us about what you're doing to make sure you know that they want to do something okay. as we go through the application process. So like we were in the appointment earlier, I will say, because um, I want to learn from you guys, Go, I'm going to talk to you for about 20 minutes before I really dive down into, you know, what we're going to do. So I talked to you guys about like, how did you guys meet? You know, how long have you guys been married? Do you have kids? Right. So I get you talking about your kids. I get you talking about how long you guys have been married. I get you talking about how you met. Right. So I kind of like regroup you guys. So no matter what happened earlier today, if you were mad because you let the dog crap on the floor, whatever, I'm having you guys like regroup to get you to think about your love for each other, right? Oh, yeah, so we first met, yada, 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 and he did this. and You know, it doesn't matter if you guys are mad at each other before I knocked on the door because I'm regrouping you guys as to this is when we first met. And then I will say, because I know Mike filled out the lead and Noel was the spouse. So then I will say, Okay, so after talking to you guys, I'm guessing, Mike, that you filled this out because you want to make sure that Noel is taken care of if you passed away. You want to make sure your kids are taken care of. So I'm guessing that's why you had filled out this lead. And typically, always they're like, yeah. Like, even if they said at the very beginning, I don't remember doing that. Like, I'm regrouping them as to where, like, he's not going to tell me, no, I really wasn't wanting to make sure Noelle and the kids were taken care of. That's really not the thing. Like, I mean, she's sitting there. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to say, nope, I didn't want to make sure she was taken care of. I don't know why I filled that out. Well, I can pretty much tell you. And then I look at Noel and I'm like, well, what do you think, Noel? Do you think he filled that out to make sure you were taken care of if something happened to him? You know, I mean, you kind of have to regroup them. So if they don't want to give me that information, I'll be like, well, wait, you know, I thought we were seeing if we could get you approved to make sure Noel was taken care of. You know what I'm saying? So then I just kind of go back to that. So I find out the need and the want. And so now I know you're approved and I call you and I'm excited when I call you, right? I'm like, Mike, hey, guess what? It's Megan. And then I'll be like, you remember me, right? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, you were here talking to me. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. So I just wanted to let you know that I just got an email saying that you got approved. So I told you I was going to call you. So I wanted to make sure that I did. So I was pretty excited about that. Okay. Oh, here's a question. I didn't think of this. What if you've applied for AIG? Do you act like, oh, you're guaranteed to get cover? Or do you say, we have to see if we can get you approved even with AIG? I say we have to see if we can get you approved for anything. I don't care if it's an accidental. I don't care if it's an AIG because that way we know, I know they're going to get approved because it's guaranteed they have to get approved. But I'm still giving them the control and they're not making a decision right there. I'm just seeing if I can get them approved. Okay. And then I call them and I do the exact same thing. Um, so I think... Because the, the question here, somebody was asking, is my plate. They said my placement 
in persistency were terrible, or uh, this one agent, their percent, but their place of persistent were terrible when they were trying to let's just see if we can get you approved. But I don't think it was from listening to Megan. And if somebody else is trying to listen, how come I have this problem? I'm guessing it's because they weren't selling the need or getting a client to want to have protection at some level before they move through trying to get them approved. Like somehow something was missing is my guess for that individual. That's if when somebody says, I tried what Megan does and I had terrible placement. I'm like, you were missing a key ingredient somewhere. And I'm thinking it was probably before that. Probably the life and trust part of it. They need a like and trust you and I think that, you know, people. Yeah. Um, comprehension of how, who they are. Like she asked a million questions. I, I, that's an exaggeration. She asked in-depth personal questions and knows who they are and what their emotions are. And one of the options is that she's just trying to get it approved or see where they can do it. I don't think that's the only, like, I think other people, Megan, that's their one thing. Well, we're just, we're just going to test it. Oh, just let me, you know, that that's not your emphasis. That's like saying, um, these are, these are great companies. Some people might take 10 or 15 minutes expanding the greatness of the company, but that might be one thing you mentioned that mutual is a good company. Mm -hmm. The fact we're just seeing if you can get approved. That's one. There's a whole litany of things that you're doing that get some involved. Mm -hmm. I think I think a lot um, is the stories, right? So uh, I right. I believe in everything. I believe in all this stuff. I believe in the importance of having it. So my dad, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. He had a cancer policy. My dad was paid $15,000. That helps with the bills. So my mom, she spends money she doesn't have. So when my dad was diagnosed with cancer, yeah, he's got insurance. Do they pay for all of it? No. Did that money help them out with their bills? Did that money help them out with other things? Yes. So it works and it's changed it's helped my family out a lot. And that's exactly what I say to my clients. You know, so I'm always telling them a story about what's happened to my family. And even if it didn't, you know somebody that it's did. I don't, I don't think you get bored with the same story over and over again. Like it's, like it's the first time you told the story about your dad getting cancer. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, I also tell a story about Michael. I mean, Michael was a client of mine since 2018 and I love them. Like, I mean, they're, I'm really close to them. Um, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. So I started learning about cancer policies. I went back out there um, and I was talking to him about that. Well, just about two weeks prior, Michael was diagnosed with cancer. So I could not help Michael out with that. So Michael is sitting there with a tube that's pumping out fluid from his lungs because he has lung cancer. And if I could have got there, if I would have learned all this and I could have got there, you know, three weeks prior, I could have helped out Michael. And I will tell that story to my other clients that say, I'm never going to get cancer. Well, you don't know that, you know, I mean, look what happened to Michael. He didn't think he would have, was ever going to get cancer either. So I could help his wife out. But I mean, you know, I just tell stories about my clients and if you don't have one use somebody else's and make it like it was your own Love it. because it's not about your client. It's about the story that's told. So yeah, I think it's a good point. You're identifying, you're making the first sale. You're identifying the need of the opportunity for the next item there. 
you're calling them back to tell them they've been approved because you're doing that and you're organized, you're coming back and telling the second story. Now, as you're doing this, this is where I wanted to get to before. So like you have your first sale that you did by a drive-by. Now you're looking at your list, what I remember you telling me, and you're calling, say, this family that applied last week to tell them they've got approved, mm -hmm. whatever it is on your list while you're driving. If you get them on the phone and you find out there's need, do you pull over? Do you, like what? Like do you just keep talking? Do you get Danielle on the phone? How do you keep like a little bit more on how do we knock this out? Do you do it out right there or do you just make a note and then you do the e app later when you get home and Danielle walks them through the e app? Like what what exactly is happening while you're driving and you've got them on the phone? So I actually just did this um with my client. Um Linda. So Linda, she got approved. I told her that I was going to call her when she got approved and I knew. So I did called her and I'm like, well, there was something that I wanted to talk to you about, which I was on my way to another client's house. Um, but I said, I go, have you ever heard of a hospital indemnity plan? She's like, no, no, I haven't. And so I'm like, okay, so what this does is for instance, Linda, I'll give you an example. So my dad was in the hospital four oh, months ago. What it does. And then she don't tell him what it does. <laughs> what it does. What it does. And then she, for example, what it does, for example. Go ahead, Megan, with your for example. <laughs> for example. Um, so my dad was in the hospital a few months ago. He was there for two days. He had stomach issues, whatever. I mean, he's fine, but they were just checking some stuff out. So he was in there for two days. He got out and he got a check in his name, Linda, for $800. I go, and I say, isn't that crazy? I go, have you... I mean, if you got a check in your name for eight hundred dollars, would that help you out? Wow. Yeah. Well, how much does that something like that cost? I'm like, well, hang on, let me pull over. So I'm like, how old are you again, Linda? You know, and then I just start asking him stuff, you know, because she already knows that it's gonna help her out. So, I mean, like, and then I say, I mean, you can get paid anywhere from $100 to $600 every day you're in the hospital. So, I mean, it really helped out my dad. You know, I mean, did he go into the hospital? It doesn't matter. It does not matter. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what the policy does. So... So would you do the yeah right then on the side of the road? Just email it to her. And mm -hmm. Yep, I just type it up, email it to her. She signs it, or if she can't figure it out, then I'll just drive over there and then or talk to her. Or send Danielle. Or send Danielle. Yeah. Hey, we uh, go ahead, Mike. I just saw. I want people to kind of picture. So organize. Drive by, go to the first client, call a client on the way to the next drive by, stop, pull over, finish the app, keep driving, go to the drive and make that sale, plot my route to the next house. Meanwhile, call the next person. Oh, what if they don't answer? We'll call the next person on the list and then keep driving the next drive by. So I'm either meeting with somebody or I'm talking to somebody from my list that I got organized that I sold in the last few weeks that I need to get back to. Is, is the pattern. It's like people say, how is she doing it? That's, Megan, correct me. I mean, that's what I'm hearing you and picturing you say. Yeah, yeah. And then like, I mean, they like you because of your personality. So when I'm calling them, I'm the exact same way that I was when I was at the house. You know, I mean, my personality, I'm like, hey, Linda, you know what I mean? So like we made a friend then and so she trusts me she likes my personality so I'm the exact same way so let me give you an example Linda isn't that amazing so like I am excited about it she's excited too 
So if you're saying like, isn't that amazing? Like, I very rarely had somebody say, not really. That's not amazing. (laughs) Like that doesn't happen because I am really excited about it. So like if you talk to them like that, then that's what you're going to get back. They're going to start marrying you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So talk a little bit more about what does Danielle do? So you're out running like crazy yesterday. What is it that Danielle's doing? How many times a day? How are you maneuvering her to help you stay on top of things? So um, I will call her and I'll tell her exactly what I've done. So I'll be like, okay, so tomorrow this is what we need to do. You know, um, Dale Trinkle's policy, write this down. This needs to be submitted, done, and taken over to him to sign. So, like, I am having her write things down while I am driving because she knows how to fill out applications. She knows how to write applications. Like, she knows how to do that. So, I mean, I'm just constantly, I'm talking to her just like, I talk to you, Mike, like I'm talking to her as I am driving and telling her what we need to do. I'm asking her, hey, did you call on this person? Like I'm reminding her of things so she can remind me. Hey, Megan, did you do that hospital indemnity on what's her face? Have you talked to her about that? Like, I mean, I'm just constant communication back and forth or, hey, I need this signature And I can't get there to get it because I have to be somewhere else. I need you to go do that for me so I can be somewhere else and still get that done. We are, um, we are encroaching on your time to get your $10,000 in sales today. (laughs) So I don't want to mess your goal up. It's been an hour and a half, which you promised you've killed it. I've got, 15 more questions. People want to know how you get referrals. They want to know how you got such a great assistant. I've had people say, I'm firing my assistant. I'm getting a new one. I've heard other ones say, I'm going to keep the one I got, but I'm going to tell I can hire me one that's better and can do everything that this girl is doing. Um, is, is Danielle licensed or is she just your assistant? That's just she's taken she's taken her license coach um she but she's not licensed right now yeah i don't think she needs to be but it'd be nice if she was and then mm-hmm. she could start doing policies and follow-ups um yeah. medicare medisup there's questions about this what i'm going to ask you is if you kill this thing what about we do this again next week we'll have a family reunion of the over mike the 28th And let's pull in number two and number three. Let's get Minikino and whoever else is number three. And let's let's kind of do this again, Mike and Noel. What do y'all think? Megan, I, I don't know. You might be on vacation the 28th. You got your little boy next week. Yeah. Thanks. No, that, that, that'll work. I can do that. Anybody, can try do that. To, anybody try to compete with Megan in the next seven days? <laughs> 140,000 in 14 days. That's what I set myself up for. Like, I don't want anybody to, you know, <laughs> just stay ahead and buy a good amount, you know, like, so, so I mean. So you bought this past day, seven days, eight days, you wrote 80,000 in premium. You spent 1,400 more dollar on leads in the eight last eight days. Is that, does yeah. that count the dollar leads, Mike? Did y'all just give them to well, her? That's, pay? that's everything she spent. I mean, people say, is that all? I mean, that's just crazy. Some people will spend $1,400 and not write $5,000. She spent $1,400 and wrote $80,000. But working all the current clients, getting referrals. We got to next week. Don't talk about how she gets referrals. Yeah. All and right. I mean, like, I think... You know, I mean, a huge thing is like, I do, I do get tired. I mean, everybody gets tired. I'm a human, you know? I mean, like, sometimes I feel like I cannot think 
anymore Wait. for the rest of the Somebody day. You told me you're like Predator from like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator, like you ain't human. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but I mean like for real, because like I get tired too, but what keeps you going? I mean, like you got to figure that out and don't stop till you get there. So if you can do, you know, just reach your goal. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know. You got to have a drive. So like, what's your drive? Yours is your little boy. And also I think yours is winning. You like winning. You don't like getting whooped. A lot of people say, I just want to compete myself. I think you want to compete with the best, don't you? I do. And then I compete with myself. I think that's huge. First you whoop them, and then you try to do the best you can do. (laughs) I'm just doing the best I can do. And they're getting crushed by somebody. And we're like, how about you win and then do the best you can do? Yeah. Right? (laughs) So generous with your time. But we want to still honor it. We appreciate you. Don't be calling Megan. Watch this over and over again. Learn your products. Go to NAALeads.com. Learn your products. You got Ivy Wilson has been a great teacher and helper of yours. Gina Hawks has helped you. Mike and Noel have helped you. Use your resources, people. And Megan, I know you got downline. You're you're making them call you, right? Like, call me from my home. Yeah. Yeah. But everybody exactly. else, leave Megan alone. We got a recording now. We're going to put this up. We'll put some notes below it. It'll be on YouTube. And um, Mike and Noel, wrap us up. Anything else for you boys and girls? Hey, get yourself your how do I get as good as Megan Wood? Start booking 40 appointments a week. Book your 40 appointments or more, and you can get as good as Megan Wood. You can beat her. I know you can. Yep. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try. <laughs> All right. Love y'all. Thank you so much. Kill it, Megan. Great job. Bye. Thank you. See you in a couple of days, Mike. Well.